Hey, RC here. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Photoshop and the web. Now, Adobe Creative Suite 3 has eliminated the use of image ready. And there's a lot of individuals that, aside from looking for where it is and finding a post that said, well, it's not here anymore, now find themselves in a position that they only have two scenarios to be able to develop graphics for the, for the use of the web. One of them would be to use Photoshop and Dreamweaver by themselves to be able to create, you know, your rollovers and all of the overall design. The other one has you using a program called Fireworks CS3. Now, I happen to be a big fan of Fireworks. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start talking about how to be able to use Photoshop and Fireworks together for the development of a website design. It's going to be a pretty simple design, but I wanted to show you just how easy the overall use of Fireworks is going to be. Now, take a look here. I wind up having a very, very simple design. There's really not that much to it. I've kept my web layout. Here I have just a series of text layers. You know, one at the top, one at the bottom. I have a nav bar that I'm using there. I have a black shape with a stroke and this is the overall canvas. Now, in another folder here, I have the navigation text. That happens to be the navigation text that I'm using for the web. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to single click on contact. I'm going to shift click on about. And if I were to try to space these so that there's even spaces between this, 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 I'm just going to go ahead and click on this. Distribute kind of throws it a little off. It's kind of one of the things that I don't like. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But just note that this is a set that has all of this navigation stuff. I promise I'll come back to that. Now, take a look. The right area just has some sample text. It has a more button. It has an about the collection. The left area just contains a picture. I like keeping all of this stuff organized so that I can get back to it and know exactly where I need to be. It also helps if all of a sudden somebody winds up telling me, all right, well, you know, I need you to take this and I need you to make it into a blue bar. It's relatively easy for me to do. Actually, I'll just show you here. Notice that this shape has a stroke and that stroke is the color that I'm using there. So relatively easy to be able to modify the overall design. Now let's go ahead and just step back here a couple. I'm going to make this a little smaller so you can see. So it's pretty straightforward. Right? Just a couple sets, just a couple boxes, some text, and we have a basic design layout. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this. Oh, actually, before I close it, just notice I haven't done anything here in so far as adding new layers, adding rollover layers, no showing, no hiding. So it's just straight text. Let's get and close that. I'm not going to save the changes there. And I have fireworks open already. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go ahead and in fireworks open. And I'm going to go ahead and open the same PSD file. So automatically I happen to like that. Now, I'm going to grab this window, make this a little smaller so you can see it. Now, I don't necessarily want to go in too much to how to be able to use fireworks just yet. I mean, I'm actually going to be working on a DVD that's going to show you a lot about how to be able to use all of this. But you'll notice that the panel design, without really even knowing how to be able to use panels, is pretty much the same as other programs like Photoshop, Flash. Notice that I have a layers palette just like in Photoshop. Notice that you can see sub layers. You have these sets just like in Photoshop. So, so far I haven't done anything that's specific to fireworks just yet. So, see? everything is there. Now, remember one of the first things that I told you was that I was going to wind up taking a look at this spacing issue. Now watch this. This is actually pretty cool. 
I'm going to single click on this one. I'm going to shift click on this one. I'm going to shift click on this one. I'm going to shift click on this one. Shift click on this one. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open my optimize and align palette. And I'm going to space them evenly. Notice that it winds up spacing them evenly, but they wind up spacing them evenly to the canvas. That's because I've got this guy right here checked. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that, then do an undo. Now, what I'll do is I'll try to space them again. Notice that that didn't work either, because it's spacing them with this guy right here. So you have to be very, very specific as to what you wind up having selected. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click that box. Now notice that the only thing that happens to be, actually, let's get an undo as well. So I wind up doing a shift click on this box. Notice that blue says that it's selected. If I do a shift click, it's not selected. So now I'm really ready. The only thing that I have selected are these four. I'm going to try this one last time. I'm going to click over here. Now everything is spaced evenly. I can go ahead and space these towards the center. So now we're good. But they're not spaced to the center of the canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Command-G, Control-G for grouping. Then I'm going to highlight the to canvas option. And then I'll click on the center. So, with a couple of flubs, we wound up getting the grouping done, and we wound up getting this to the center. So that's not too, too bad. I like the way the spacing and the layout design in Fireworks is done. I think it's a little bit cleaner. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this Optimize. I'm going to come back over here to the layers. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to go back to the layers. Watch this. Close. I'm going to leave this open, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Slice tool. Notice the Slice tool over here. So very similar to Photoshop. So, so far, not really that much work inside of Fireworks. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to click on this and drag it down and create a slice here. I'm going to click on this, create a slice here. Then I'm going to create another slice here, then another one here, another one here, and I'm just going to continue to slice this all out in this fashion. I'm going to give myself a little bit of repeater. Actually, I'll do this. So a big box there. Now, I'll explain why I'm slicing it this way in another tutorial. But for now, I'll just go ahead and I'll cut this out like so. So, pretty straightforward slicing. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to create those rollover states. And in image ready, we'd have to create you know a layer. We'd have to show and hide stuff. This is actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to use this option that's right here called Pages and Frames and History. I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to go to the Frames panel. Now, I have this highlighted. All this is is a series of layers that I've created, but they sit on one frame. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this drop down here. Actually, I'll got to move this so you can see it. And notice it tells me I'm going to create a duplicate frame. Think of frames as almost kind of like a state in time. Now, I'm going to select the duplicate frame. It's going to tell me, all right, how many duplicate frames do you want? I only want one, and I want it after the current frame. So now I have another frame called frame two. Frame one, frame two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and actually hide the slices and hotspots for the time being. So frame one are all of the layers that we wind up creating at one specific moment in time. So I'm going to say maybe they're normal. I just double clicked on the name. Frame two 
are all of the layers that we wind up having in the document at another specific moment in time. Perhaps we can call it when you're over them. So now you have a normal, layer, a normal frame and an overframe. In the overframe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to single click. I'm going to come back over here, get my pointer. I'm going to single click on this. And now I'm going to say when we are in this overframe, I want to change the color of the text. And I want to change that color to, let's say, a yellow. I'm doing this with pretty obvious colors because I want you to be able to see the difference. Now take a look at this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this guy right here and I'm also going to make that yellow. So now what do we have? The normal frame, that's what it looks like when it's normal. The over frame, that's what it looks like when you're over it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to show my slices and hotspots again. And this is where it gets even cooler. Watch this. I'm going to zoom in just to show you what it looks like here. Now see the word about what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right over it. See that there's this little target now. Watch. I'm going to single click on the target and I'm going to drag it ever so slightly to the right you're going to notice that that blue line appears. That blue line is actually a swap action. Now watch this. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to zoom out to show you what happened. It says, hey, take the image that's in this slice and swap it with the image that's in the overframe. And I'm going to click OK. Now that you've seen it zoomed in, Watch this. Click over here. I can grab this and drag it to the left a little bit. There's the line. What do I want to do? I want to swap it. I'm going to swap it with the image in the overstate. So literally, you can just kind of run around and just drag them. Click. Click on the center and drag. Slightly to the left. Click OK. Click. Click and drag. Slightly to the left. Swap it with number two. You'll see it better here. Watch this. If I click and drag, that's what the actual line looks like. What it's saying is take this slice and move it and swap it with another one that's directly underneath it. What is it? Number two. That's it. Now watch. Okay, I'm going to click on a file. I'm going to click on preview in browser. I'm going to preview in Safari. And Notice that there you have it. Rollovers wind up working relatively quickly. So it was actually pretty easy to be able to set up just a couple of slices and some slight dragging, and you can get the entire rollover setup done in a relatively short amount of time. Thanks for watching. My name's RC. I'll talk to you guys soon.